If you ever try to make a buckle or a rivet or a grommet or any piece of jewelry in Clothes 3 d you've discovered that it's really, really difficult to make it. That's because Clo is really not that great for making what we in the design world call hardware or anything hard really. In this video, I will show you some tips and tricks to make your life easier. First, let's start with the shape of your hardware piece. You should know in advance exactly what kind of hardware piece you're making and you should be able to draw it. That means that maybe you do your research, you look at existing hardware pieces, you study and you understand exactly what is that shape from every possible angle. Once you decide on a shape that you want to make, the first step would be to ideally create a flat sketch of it with all of the measurements to see exactly what that shape looks like. So here, for example, you can see I have a tech pack for a turn lock and you can see that the front view, the base view and what it looks like from the side. I will create this shape right here. I will make sure that I have a separate piece that stands up. This ideally is my turn lock that I can flip around and lock or unlock the turn lock. But here I will make it just a dimensional piece that looks like this from the front and like this from the side. Now let's go to the 2D window of Clothe 3D and I will start drawing my shape. So I'm gonna go back and forth in between my sketch and Clothe 3D. So I can see that the first thing here is a rectangle that is six centimeters by 3.4 centimeters. Obviously you can give yourself inches, millimeters, whatever measurements you would like to work with. So I'm gonna go to settings, user settings, and then user interface and under unit system, I will change this to centimeters. Now I can work exactly with the measurements that I have in my flat sketch. Next, I'm gonna go to my pattern making tool. I will select a rectangle and I will left click once to create my shape. So my shape was six centimeters by 3.4. So the width will be six and the height would be 3.4. This will give me exact shape like drawn on the sketch. Next thing that I see on my shape is that the edges are a bit curved. So I will come to my smooth curve tool for each corner. I'm going to come in as I'm pushing the tool inside. I'm going to right click so I have exact measurements and I'm going to choose 0.5 on both sides. I'm going to link them together and that will give me symmetric measurement here on the corner. So I'll do the same thing for all of them. Left click once, start dragging towards the middle then right click and give 0.5 and it will automatically give it to both because I have them linked here and I'll repeat that for all corners. Alternatively, you can just left click drag until you hit 0.5 if you can pinpoint it exactly and just let it go. Now, next thing you're noticing here is that my edges are really jaggedy. You can see that this is a really sharp angle here instead of the curve in the blue line. That is because I'm working in particle distance 20. Particle distance 20 is much easier for the computer to calculate, but it gives these jaggedy edges. Once I finish this shape, I will reduce the particle distance to get a much smoother edge here. Next, I'll start working on this inner hole and I can see that it is 23 millimeters and 10.7 millimeter. I'm gonna stay in centimeters, so that would be 2.3 centimeters and 1.07 centimeters. So let's make that hole. Now that we are inside the pattern, we need to create internal lines. So I need to switch my tool to internal rectangle. I can still left click once inside of the shape to have a particular measurements 2.3 for the width 1.07 the height and that's my inner hole you can see that it's not perfectly placed so i'm just gonna select the shape and I'm gonna place it right in the middle. You can align this shape either by eye. I would make sure that it is aligned with that middle hole and nothing is red. It will turn completely yellow when it's aligned. Or as you're moving it, you can also right click on it. You get this pop-up window. First, you can just say center here, but then make sure that here the measurements are perfectly the same. Left, right is three, that's fine up and down is a bit different. So I'm going to make this 
and you can see that now they're exactly the same. I click enter and this is now perfectly aligned. I can see also that my shape here, it is also curved. So I can go through the same process, grab the corner, start shifting in and I can right click to give it a very particular measurement. So I'm going to try with 0.2 and see what that looks like. Again, my line is a bit jaggedy and that is because of the high particle distance. I'm going to stay here with the linked equal distance on both sides with 0.2 and I'm going to do the same thing for all sides. Next, for visual reference, I want to create these two holes here. I do want to have visually that reference. So I'm going to create a couple of more internal lines that represent those two. So I'm going to go to internal ellipse. I'm going to left click, hold the shift and create a perfect circle. And right now this looks like a rectangle, but it will be smooth circle once I decrease the particle distance. So I'm going to duplicate it and then place it exactly on the other side. I can also make sure that it is aligned exactly where I need it to be. I want it to be a particular distance from the right side. So here on the right side, I'm going to go to one. And I'll do the same here. I'm going to start shifting, moving, right click. And then for the left side, I'm going to give one. So this should be perfectly positioned on both sides now. I need this to become a hole if I want this to be true to the original shape. If you wanted to cut that hole out, all you have to do is select the shape, right click on it, and then convert to hole that will cut out the hole. The next step of the process is to change the material. You can expect this being in a default fabric to react and behave like a piece of hardware. So for example, if I simulate, you can see it falls on the ground and it acts really soft or acts as whatever this fabric here you have designated. We will change this material to something hard. So let's go to library, select fabric, and then scroll all the way down to trim hardware. So I'm going to left double click to have this come to my object browser. And then I'm going to select my pattern and designate that fabric by assigning it with the arrow. So now we have something much harder as a material here. So you can see that it's not buckling anymore and it's behaving much more like hardware. The next step in the process is to give this pattern piece a little bit of thickness. You can see that right now it is very thin. There's absolutely no thickness to this. Obviously a piece of hardware, a buckle, a turn lock would have thickness. Let's select the pattern piece, make sure that here it is blue, and then open property editor if it's not open, and then just scroll all the way down until you see additional thickness. That's under simulation properties. So if this is closed, just left click once on the triangle to open simulation properties. Currently additional thickness rendering is zero. So I'm going to give it a five and see how that will behave. Click return and take a look in the window. If you don't see any difference in the window, that is because here you are not under thick texture surface. If you're under anything else, you will not see the thickness. You need to select this roll that looks thick and says thick textured surface. Left click once and you can see immediately how this got a lot thicker. You can see that obviously this is still very jaggedy. Currently the particle distance is 20. I'm going to change it to 5. And the other thing we need to change is the curve side geometry. Currently the curve side geometry makes this really rounded because it's on. You can see that in property editor on the curve side geometry we have this on. If I uncheck that, you can see that I now have a flat piece of hardware. If you like that, you can leave it as is. If you don't like that, we can change that to a much smaller curvature. So here right now we're at hundred percent. I'm going to slide this bar lower and I'm going to see what this looks like. You can see that now we have very little curvature. Let's bring it up to, let's say about 50%. And you can see that the curvature changes according to what we choose here. I'm going to bring the particle distance to even lower. I'm going to bring it to two. And you can see that now my lines are getting filled up. Now you can play with this until you're happy and find the perfect roundness, the perfect particle distance that makes your piece of hardware the best that it can be. I need to create this lock piece. I'm going 
going to come to my rectangle tool. This looks good to me. The only other thing I need to do is around my edges. So I'm going to repeat the same process as before and I will go through the same process of adding thickness and curved side geometry. I need this piece to be much thicker so I'm going to give it eight and I don't need the curved side geometry as much on this one so I'm going to change that too. I do not intend to open and close this piece. I will simply place it on top of it and I will treat the plate and the lock as one piece. There will just be a decorative element on my garment. So I'm just going to insert it there rotate so that i can see it open or close my desired effect here if i don't want the curved side geometry i can have this piece be flat and straight i want to look at this piece from every possible angle and make sure that it makes sense and when i'm happy with it i am ready to export this piece as an opj file for my particular hardware i have two pieces i have the plate and i have the lock itself and my plate is thinner the lock is obviously thicker yours might look different so make sure that you have all of the building blocks that make it look realistic. When you're creating the shapes, you can have as many cutouts, as many additional pieces. You can pile up multiple pieces here. You can place these pieces next to each other, on top of each other, or pile them up however you need to, as long as you don't simulate. If you simulate, these pieces will fall apart and separate. So we want to keep these pieces together and then export this as an OPJ file so that we can have have one solid object brought back as a trim. This is how we create a piece of hardware that then can be brought in and used on any garment, any accessory as a hardware piece. Here's what you need to remember when creating hardware or jewelry in Close 3D. First, draw all your shapes in the 2D window. That means any kind of cutouts, any kind of additional pattern pieces, all your shapes need to be created in 2D window as pattern pieces. Two, change material to trim hardware and assign that material to all of your hardware pieces. Three, add additional thickness render in the property editor. Four, turn on thick textured surface to see the thickness in the 3D window. If you don't do that, you won't be able to see any kind of width or thickness. Five, Arrange your shapes as needed in the 3D window. Six, whatever you do, do not simulate. If you simulate, your pieces will fall apart and will not look as one hardware piece. Seven, just export your piece as one OBJ file and that's it. You're done. Once you have that piece as an OBJ file, you can bring it back as a trim or an avatar and then use it on your garments or accessories. Hope you enjoyed that video and it was really helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions, leave any comments or give me suggestions for any other videos you would like to see. Thank you for watching Bob and Talk.